All right. Hello. Welcome to the first episode of the Grilled Spot podcast. I'm your host, Calvin Taloki, the CEO of Ref Par Media. Some of you may know me as Ref Problems on Instagram. And um, I am very happy to welcome Jana Usher or Jana Devine of zdhospitality.com uh, to the studio today to talk about ushering a new hospitality attitude. Uh, so, Jana, welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm doing well. I am doing well. I just um, still getting accustomed to California. I uh, moved here <laughs> yeah, yeah. about six weeks ago. Um, I did go to Chicago last weekend and uh, mm -hmm. I remember what humidity feels like. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> it was 93 degrees and uh, it was right. very, very humid. And I remembered, yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. California is beautiful climate. And no wonder everybody wants to be here. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, very happy to be here. And um, why don't you tell the people at home uh, who you are and uh, and what you do, your background? Sure. So my name is Jana Asher. My company is called Jana Divine Hospitality. I'm in the middle of relaunching my business. So therefore, a lot of people might know me by ZD Hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, I was born and raised in Germany. Um, my dad was Hungarian. My mom was Serbian. They migrated to Germany separately and met there. And um, I grew up speaking three languages. Um, and then kind of like my hospitality career really started when I was 14. My uh, very first job was at Burger King. And I was very excited to do what mm -hmm. I did. I was the girl that cleaned the restaurant, you know, took the little trays and put them away and cleaned the tables. And I was ecstatic that <laughs> all of my tables were always clean. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once I moved up to being a cashier, I think that's where everything really started for me. Okay. And <clears throat> obviously, my background is also my dad was a chef, a well known chef in Germany. Uh, my mom used to run a, a housekeeping department in a fairly medium sized hotel. Okay. So, you know, growing up, I was either at the hotel or at the restaurant with my dad and it was kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of born into this, to be honest with you. Like, right. I, You've I don't been even... <laughs> immersed in the business your whole life. I mean, honestly, because I don't even remember having a conversation with my parents. So what is it that you want to be? One, you know, it was no, it was like, I'm going to be something in that something hospitality. Right. And yeah, and you know, to be honest with you, like my entire career, I worked for amazing, amazing establishments like the Hilton and Intercontinental and Four Seasons and Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago and Castilla mm. Europe and Pig right. and Olive and mm -hmm. some really amazing places, right? But like at times I remember when um, upper management, when I would have interviews for specific higher positions, they would ask me and say, you know, we don't, we see you jump a lot around on your resume. Like, can mm -hmm. you not keep a job or, <laughs> you know, what's, what's your deal? And I'm like, you know, right. I really, it's really not about that. But to be honest with you, yes, I got bored very fast and I mm -hmm. outgrew my job fast because mm -hmm. I was always into wanting to learn and wanting to accomplish the next goal and wanting to be the best salesperson on the floor. And once I achieved all of that, it kind of got like, wah, 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 you know, right. and then I kind of wanted to move on. And besides, you know, like I used my profession to travel and see right. the world of hospitality, um, right. which really not a whole lot of people can do in their job because I feel like a lot of people are unfortunately stuck in one place in one space all the time. And I was, very blessed to have this profession that allowed me to see the world and meet fantastic people like you and uh you know be where i am today mm -hmm. so yeah so i um a couple things out of what you just said uh, you know i say that at first you know talking about your first job at, at, at burger king at 14 mm -hmm. years old and mm -hmm. you know taking pride in in you know keeping your tables clean and this that's something you know you you kind of, I wouldn't say you, you, you glossed over, you said it very quickly, but I'm not sure that people understand how big of a, of a trait that is, you know, and that's something that bothers me a lot when I see out there in, in the, in the world, especially in, in our industry is, you know, people that don't take pride in the job, you know, um, I'll actually just tell like a, a funny story. Once I'm at the, the grocery store and obviously not something you, you, you know, typically associate with hospitality per se. Right. right. But it was this young kid, he's bagging the groceries and stuff like that. And he's, you know, putting the bread at the bottom and and everything, stuffs everything into one bag. And I, I, I go back to my car and I, I fixed it myself, right? But 
I don't know if like I felt maybe I should have just told him, listen, take pride in the job, man. If he, yeah, you're just bagging groceries. I get it. This is not going to be your whole life, but do it right. Right. You know, take some kind of pride in the work. You know, mm-hmm. and um, an- another thing you, you mentioned was uh, people asking you about jumping around, which is what I want to get into. Um, you said that you've you you know you felt like you kind of learned everything you wanted to learn and you know move on. And I I I consider myself that same kind of person actually. Mm-hmm. After about a year and a half to two years, you figured out the job, you know, and right? it's like okay, what's what's next? <laughs> Did you feel that that there just weren't opportunities at the places you were you were at? Was why you had to leave? Um, you know, at times, yes. And at other times, to be honest with you, I was very young. And obviously, I didn't have the the attitude and the mindset and the specific type of ways of how to go about specific things. Obviously, I learned that with getting older and growing closer with God. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, a lot of times I did feel like that it didn't seem like that there was some opportunity for me to really go further. And especially growing up in Europe, you know, Europe is a little bit different than here because in Europe, you just don't get so quickly an opportunity to climb up your ladder. Like you can Mm -hmm. sometimes be in one job, you know, for years and years and years until you get a tiny, tiny promotion. And here in America, it's so different. You know, it's beautiful here because if people really do see that you have the drive and they kind of need the person that you represent on the job Mm -hmm. for a specific thing, you'll get the opportunity here quick, Mm -hmm. you know, and you don't get it over there so quick. You literally have to get a degree, get another degree, get from one position into another, maybe even change hotels after a year or two. And then, you know, at one hotel, you're just a shift leader in the next hotel after a year or two or three, you can apply maybe for assistant, this and this, like, it's, it's such a long driven thing. And I mean, I don't Mm -hmm. know if it's today like that, because, you know, I I don't live in Europe anymore since almost 15 years. So it might be different. But when I grew up there, it was very difficult, you know, to get where you wanted to go. Like, hey, I know this, I want to get there. I have the drive, put me in coach. Like, no, Mm, right, right. (laughs) You know, it, 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 it just doesn't work like that fundamentally um, from there. So, yeah, I, I wanted to find more and I wanted mm-hmm. to see different things and I wanted to execute more things that maybe were in their eyes trusted or something. Right. Interesting. And then, yeah, and then I wanted to piggyback on what you said with the groceries. Mm-hmm. You know, very mm-hmm. interesting because... You know, I really do feel and understand what you're saying. And I do agree with that, that each person really has to go into anything like with a full heart and with an open mind, right. even if it's just bagging groceries, because you never really know if you're bagging groceries of a CEO right now, right? Right, of right. Of a CEO with a ton of opportunities and you get into a little chitty chatty or whatever and you're sympathetic, you know, you're like nice and the person is receptive towards you. You never know where that might lead you. So it's always good to really do everything with full heart right exactly exactly but the other part to that is which we cannot ignore is management that Mm -hmm. puts these people in specific positions because Mm -hmm. if our leaders are not taking the lead of saying what you said this is a typical management matter right there you know the manager of this grocery store should observe his people and possibly, hopefully, this young kid too, and then pull him to the side privately and say exactly what you were thinking, you know? Right. And if that doesn't really happen, people really don't know how to do things better because nobody tells them. And sometimes that's being mistaken for they don't want to do better versus they don't know how to do better, Right, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And we have to consider that because a lot of times it's our management that is really, really, really not doing 100% of their job. Yeah. No, I, I would totally agree with that. I mean, I'm of the mindset that people come in intending to do a good job. I think people want to come into work and, and do yeah. well. Uh, yeah. I, I think human nature also is that if you're allowed to get away with something, you probably will, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if sure. we've we've all been employed at some point, I would say if I knew I could do no work this week and still get my check, I, probably, right. I might do it, right? <laughs> but right. you know, th- things don't work like that. Those things tend to catch up with you because you know, if you're not getting the work done, eventually those checks will stop coming because your your performance will suffer. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I I completely agree with that. Uh, I know this is a story we shared um, 
in, in our pre-show about I went to a, a, a coffee place recently here out here in California. And I was um, I forgot my mask that morning because I was up at 4 a.m. filming another show. And, um, you know, I was in the middle of a move. My brain just wasn't there that day. And I grabbed everything right. except the mask and didn't realize until I got all the way out to where I was going about a 20 minute drive. And I was like, oh, forgot the mask. And I'm like, OK, well, most places these days will will give you one. You know, I, mm-hmm. I was at a at a Costco kind of a place and um, they were they would they had masks provided for you. So mm-hmm. if I'm going to a coffee place, which is in the hospitality world, and I expect at least a decent level of service, right. I would think they would have one. So I, I walked in with uh, the, the little thing that you use to wipe your glasses, you know, that, that comes in the case. There's the only piece of cloth that I had. And plus, I had my shirt up kind of as well. I'm walking right. in. And and the waitress goes, uh, oh, sir, where are you going? So well, I'm going inside. Well, you can't go in without a mask. I'm like, well, I'm hoping you can give me one in there. Oh, no, we don't give you no mask. I'm like, oh. okay, so I'll find another place to have coffee. It wasn't a big deal. And I was getting ready to leave it at that when she turns around to some other customers and goes, well, I don't know what his problem is. It's not like this is new. And it was like, come on, lady. All right. Like. I've I've worked in the industry. We, you know, yeah. we, we have we all know about the quote unquote Karens. Um, right. I'm not being one. I'm clearly making an attempt, and I was hopeful you would have one. There's a lot of different ways to handle that. You know, you can Absolutely. just serve. You know, there's a store right down the block that I know that they're selling some, and you know, if um, if if you go get one, then we'll be happy to serve you. You right. know what I mean? There's 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 no and then there's there's that you know especially mm-hmm. talking about me to other customers that's when mm-hmm. I had a problem mm-hmm. you know, up until that point I was like okay she can use a little bit of training but you know I'll just mm-hmm. go somewhere else because I'm sure somebody else would be happy to have my business and give me a mask because sure. again having worked in the business if she forgot her mask and show up showed up to work her boss isn't sending her home I guarantee you that mask in the back there will say. You're going to wear this and you're going to go to work, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? So don't mm-hmm. tell me you don't have masks. There's masks in mm-hmm. the building. I know that they are, you know. Yeah. Um, but to your point, and I know we, we touched on this before, that's a reflection of the of the company culture, right? It is. Um, yep. And if, if that individual isn't addressed, if that behavior isn't addressed, it will, it will continue. Um and I, I did have some 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 thoughts about this, so we'll we'll, we'll dive right in. We'll get heavy early, sure. Um, but I think this kind of ties into the whole um, hiring crisis that we're currently having in, yeah. in hospitality, and it's a vicious cycle, right? Because you hire an yeah. individual like that because it's a frontline, entry level job almost anybody can do, right? And you need them right now. And you need them, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's it's an issue of need on the employer mm-hmm. side and mm-hmm. ease on the employee side. It's an easy mm-hmm. job to get because we just we'll, we'll take anyone who will take a warm body that can do that job right now. Right. Right. Uh, we're not in a position to be too selective because we're just not getting the people through. The other side of that is the reason you're not getting the quality people through is because the money's not good enough. Right. So, not everybody wants to come do that kind of work for the meager wages that these entry level positions, um, you know, offer. What What right. are your thoughts on on how how we can potentially solve this problem? Uh, so it's it's a very 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 sensitive subject, and it's very difficult at the time, right? Mm-hmm. Because yes, on one side, business owners are literally in the need to get anybody in the doors to just keep it going, right? Right. But I just want to remind everybody, and I totally get it, that we all have to pay bills and stuff has to get done. I'm like, I'm with everybody that is in that position. I totally understand. But I do believe that it starts with a general mindset, even of the owner itself. Because if you work at something with fear, you will not get anywhere. So mm-hmm. it starts up here already that you know, regardless of what's happening, I will get through this and I will be finding the right person. And if not, I might as the owner have to stand there and serve coffee myself for the next five months. Mm -hmm. If that's my business, I have to understand that I as an owner have the biggest responsibility to me, to my business, to the promise I made to myself. And therefore I maybe have the biggest struggle too. But, you know, so that's one aspect that people 
kind of sometimes forget because business was going great prior and I've never had to stand there as an owner and do it myself. I can just come and pick up the checks mm -hmm. and leave and have a fun life, you know? Right. So sometimes right. we gotta, we gotta do what we gotta do. Right. And yes, when we do have people that we hire, I think the biggest thing right now that we can really take, put our main focus to is training, mm -hmm. education, helping them to execute how we want our business to run. We as owners have to have a vision. If I as an owner have a vision that everybody that works for me, I want them to go the extra mile, I will train everybody the same way. For instance, your example with this girl at the coffee shop, if this would have been my coffee shop, I would try to train my staff to go the extra mile. A complete perfect solution for you not having your mask would have been, for instance, for her to say, I'm very sorry, we're not allowed to have anybody with a mask, but what would you like today? I'm happy to bring the coffee out to you. Exactly. That would have been a perfect thing where you would have felt, wow, mm -hmm. you know, they do that mm -hmm. for me kind of thing. And it would have been a perfect opportunity for them to show that regardless of what, because everybody has a bad day everybody's in the weeds but if we are not working with each other nothing will happen we need the employees just the employees need us it, it's not gonna work <laughs> with a business owner not having staff and staff right now being able for maybe the very first time really to be picky the right. staff right now can really be like you know what mm -hmm. mm, i don't like that i'm gonna find a different job i don't like this i'm gonna go somewhere else because right. the buffet of jobs is open right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we as owners, we have to come out of the gate with something that we maybe never had to. Right. right. And there might be a lot of things. It might be a better attitude as leaders. It might be training for my managers. Hey, it might be even training for myself as an owner. Let me look up. In fact, let me remember how everybody's name and my staff is. Let me remember when everybody's birthday is. Let mm -hmm. me remember that my girl that worked for me two years just had a baby to congratulate her. It's little details right. like that. Right. Fundamentally, everybody wants to be acknowledged mm -hmm. and everybody wants to have attention. Absolutely. So if we owners do that for our staff and the staff in return, because we're going to draw those type of people to us, because whatever we put out there, regardless if it's just in thought and dwelling oh my god i don't have staff i don't know how to do this i don't know how to get there i don't know how to pay this bill i don't and all those lower energy thoughts which is absolutely normal because it is difficult right now but if mm -hmm. we can just try to just go in here and remember the vision that we have remember why we wanted this coffee shop just remember why we wanted this restaurant just remember how it felt when we signed the ownership of a hotel Mm -hmm. And when we mm -hmm. can just take get go back there and just pull out that that love for the industry, right. I promise we will draw the right people to us. And there's right. people like me, there's other consulting people that are happy to help. You know, it, it doesn't mean just because we have to invest something into something, stuff will come back to us. No gamble, no risk. Or how how do you Americans say that? The American saying there's no risk, no gamble, or how's no, it go? no 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 risk, no reward. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So so we gotta risk something. And sometimes it's scary to be like, oh well, you know, I gotta invest some money in this in this yeah. company that's gonna help that's... me show my people. But mm -hmm. in the long run, it will come back to you because yeah. now is the time to set fundamental structured guidelines mm -hmm. and boundaries. And maybe for the very first time for some owners, just figure out what you want to represent. Who do you want right. to be with your business? What do you want to be? Right. Do you want to be casual? You want to be fine dining? You want to be casual with fine dining service? <laughs> you want, what do you mm. want to be? We right. can create anything, you know? But right. if, if an owner doesn't really know how they want their business to run, mm -hmm. it's difficult to find people to, to execute that for you. How that can is, they know? You don't know. How yeah, will you they don't. know? <laughs> that is very profound. It's very profound. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's one of the major issues is mm -hmm. we, we 
we're too worried as an industry, we're too worried about Very. immediate ROI, right? Everything, the reason, in my opinion, the reason I think hospitality is so far behind the curve on say something like technology is because every time this case is presented and it goes up the chain, it's, well, how much is this going to cost? Right. And who can this replace? Right. As opposed to who can this enhance, right? Right. Who can we and how, help? Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I'm not naive. I don't expect, you know, if we come out with, say, something that's great for, you know, checking in guests or, or a, right. a great system that, okay, so they, you may not need five GSAs on a shift, right? But what if, as opposed to eliminating GSAs, you convert two of those into front office managers, Right. So right. now the, the menial tasks of being a GSA are covered. Right. Check ins, check outs, reports, all of these different things. Now, right. this person, instead of spending 80 percent of the time on busy work that it's necessary, but as opposed to spending time on these type of things, now they can really think about how do I better serve this guest? Mm-hmm. Right. How, how do I how do I help create an experience for this person? As opposed to us looking at it, well, okay, now we now we can cut bodies, or we can, or if we do invest in this, how soon am I going to uh, am I going to get money back from this? And yeah. understanding, yes, this is a business. We, you know, people don't own hotels and restaurants and everything in hospitality to not make Absolutely. money. But right. in the long run, the people that make the money are the ones that provide the best service. Exactly, and 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 you know, I'm so glad that you just said that because. If, if people really think that they're going to go into the world of hospitality owning anything with not having the heart for wanting to serve other people, if that's mm-hmm. not your number one goal, it's going to be very difficult because you might as well just take your money and invest it in somewhere, somewhere else. Because a, a running a hotel, owning a hotel, a restaurant, a country club, casino, Airbnb, bed and breakfast, even a food truck, regardless of what you got to have the understanding that you are a servant to people and people are paying for a specific service. So right. if I enter your hotel, yes, I would love to be greeted already before even walking inside by your doorman. I would love mm-hmm. my, my stuff to be taken out for me. I would love a little charming conversation at the reception telling me all the beautiful amenities inside and around me too. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't like I would love to see how people are being knowledgeable within the establishment, too. You know, even Mm -hmm. in a restaurant, if if I have a conversation with somebody and I'm not from this town or this city or this state, it'd be absolutely fantastic to be like, yeah, you know, the New Year's ATM is there. And have you checked out this? And, you know, you need to be familiar with your surroundings, too, not Mm -hmm. only inside, but also around you. What's what's kind of like happening? And the more you have you know, the more you have knowledge about the own product that you're try- trying to sell on the floor or within your establishment and the surroundings, the more guests will look at you as like, wow, this is great service. I didn't even have to ask for that. And it's got mm-hmm. answered to me. Mm-hmm. And I think this is really like going the extra mile, thinking out of the box and not this whole, this is what I need to do. This is my job description. I'm only able to fold napkins and nothing else but just amongst each other too. Hey, I can right. fold napkins. Do you need help in your section? No problem. It's, you know, it, it needs to be more of a team spirit environment right. where everybody feels like we're in this together and this can be trained and it can be implemented and mm-hmm. taught, you know, but this whole thing of like, you know, this is my section and this is my guest and don't take my table away and, <laughs> you know, the manager, for instance, not being out there in the weeds when it's really on fire, like not really right. picking up plates or not really clearing tables or helping his team out or whatever. It's honestly like this is the stuff that we really need to work on, you yeah. know, this, and it's imperative yeah. right now. And it's the best time right now because whoever is not supposed to be in your team maybe deserves an exit. And whoever yeah, is supposed absolutely. to be in your team, just let them come in. You know, like, let's, let's create something where everybody feels safe, where they have the tools that they need to work with, where they feel safe coming to work, where they feel safe that they're being heard as a team, you know, because your team 
is the one that executes the work. So if they tell you they need new trays and they need new glasses and they need more regs and they need anything, please listen to them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because you, you, are, you are disturbing their craft of not providing the proper tools. Right. So just, right. just give them the tools that they really need and let them do what they're supposed to be doing, which is money for you. You know, and the more you yeah. educate them and the more you train them and the more you polish your unpolished diamonds, believe me, with time and time and keeping maintaining your training strategies, they will be bling, 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 bling. No, <laughs> and everybody's going to make money. You know, pe- pe- waiters going to make money for themselves mm-hmm. more because they're now learning from, for instance, my company and me or other people that do this, how to upsell, how to talk how to engage, how to be more, I'm not saying, uh, but, but, but more, more just engaging with the guest, right? And then the owner in return will also make more money because they make more money for him. Exactly. It's, it's, it's really not difficult. And that, that, no. that's what's frustrating. <laughs> it's, it's a very simple business that we work mm-hmm. in, but we overcomplicate it because we forget basics like that. Basically, right. it's just, uh, I forget what company, but it's ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen, right? Right. It, yes. At the end of the day, this business is very simple. Be nice to people, treat them as if you're welcoming them to your house. Right. You know, and also treat your workplace as as it is your own. Don't break plates on purpose. Be careful, please. When you go inside and out the kitchen, don't stop while you walking, you know, like, you know, pretend that those, you know, like the cutlery and the plates and the glasses, all of that costs money. And whenever we break it by accident, Mm -hmm. we're making our owner a problem. So let's just also be aware of that side that the owners and the investors have burdens that we have no idea about because we come in, we cluck in, we cluck out and we go, Mm -hmm. but they, they hang in the office, they have meetings, they have all the stuff to worry about, you know? So Mm -hmm. it's gotta be more of a mutual respecting each other and respecting the space. Mm -hmm. And that's really not nothing, nothing hard to ask. Just, yeah. Just have respect for another human being. And, and what, yeah. what they may be going through. But it's something you touched on earlier is, you know, we're all so worried about our thing and everybody thinks mm-hmm. that they are the most important, I guess. Right. Sure. Or we, we're only focused on, on our own individual problems a lot of times. Sure. And this business is the exact opposite of that. Right. Like when these, these people come through the door, your problems don't matter. Matter of fact, when you clock in, when you walk into the door, everything that comes with you, your your personal life, your issues, what you may be dealing with, doesn't actually matter. You're there to right. serve the people that are coming in, right? right. So, you know, um, I've I've been through a lot of different positions. I've done everything from housekeeping, the front desk, up to you know, director of revenue management. So I've kind of been at every every phase, every level, right? And right. what always frustrated me was you, you'd hear these people who are, you know, entry-level positions and say, oh, well, you know, the GM doesn't do any work. I stand here on my feet all day, and et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's like, I remember being a GSA, <laughs> right? I remember being a waiter. When you clock out, you're done. Right. And it, you, you don't have to think about work until the next nope. day when you come in, mm-hmm. right? Once you get to management level, Oh, it's different. It's, it doesn't, right. There is no such thing as you clock out and you're done, right? Nope. Even if the emails aren't coming in, you still have to, you're still thinking about, am I selling rooms right now? Is right. that I, I close the extra net? Did I, uh, you know. Is my staff performing how they're supposed to? How they're supposed to be, right. You know, did I cover everything in stand up today? Did I make mm-hmm. sure I gave them all the right information so they can execute? You know, mm-hmm. as, as the revenue manager is like, oh, is, is night order going to get it right? Do I have to worry about this in the morning? All the different right. coding and, and stuff like that. So people have to remember and, 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 and think about that. Like your, your managers, your supervisors, your GMs are dealing with things you, you don't know yet because you've never been at that level, right? Right. So when you get there, then you can have a judgment. But, uh, you know, on the opposite side, we more than likely, we've done your job already. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. <clears throat> when we're given a directive, when we're given a, a, a advice or whatever it is, understand that it's coming from a place of we know already. Experience. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, but right. one thing you said, and I, I think is really great. I think we have a huge opportunity here as an industry to hit the reset button. Totally. Right. And it's it's not it's not a, a black and white answer. Uh, it's not I'm not saying it's simple, but people like the person I mentioned in, in 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 the story, they have no place in this business anymore. Okay? We have to get out of this this desperation to just get Fear. a warm body. Yeah, and just mm-hmm. just put somebody in there and then we're afraid to uh, to really coach them because we're afraid to lose them. Right. No, I right. think you could lose that person because the the other mindset that I think is 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 prevalent out there is that we feel that if we paid that person more, they'd behave better, and that's absolutely wrong, because the right person will do the job correctly, mm-hmm. even if if the pay is not there. Right. Like when you were fourteen years <laughs> old, I'm sure you weren't making a ton of money, but you took right. pride in work. Right. right? You, you absolutely. took pride in doing it. Absolutely. But, you know, this this brings me also to another a point, um, you know, it's also a little bit, you know, it can go this way and that way. Yeah, because mm-hmm. if you, for instance, have a manager, OK, let's say you have a restaurant that has about 280 seats, pretty busy. You know, you make a good revenue. You have lunch and dinner. And you, you're pretty busy. OK. And so now you have your GM and you have your assistant GM. And you have all those hierarchies and they go all down. So but sometimes. People have the expectation of wanting to pay the person that has the most responsibility in this, which is not the owner in a sense. It actually is really the person that runs the entire team. In this case, it would be the general manager of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're being offered positions or amounts that are really not okay anymore. Like, listen, I got offered, and this is a while ago, okay, because again, I'm in my business since a little small while. And prior to that, I'd done some other things to get here. So when I was in my last position, I got offered for an assistant general manager position. I think it was 65,000 a year. Listen, there's no way nobody's going to do a 12 to 14 hour job for that kind of money, leaving their own family at home, sacrificing no time with the kids, sacrificing possibly no time with your spouse, sacrificing their own private time with themselves when Mm -hmm. not being rewarded financially and giving their all to you and your business. Right. So, so you know, it's sometimes it's exactly what you said, but sometimes it can also go this way. And we have to just be aware. If no, of course. Want, yeah. yeah. It's, you know? The, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's both it's sides. Because, for example, I'm sure there's tons of that happening right now because of the pandemic mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, just employees knowing that people right. are a little, a little desperate right now, right? So, so you put that position out there. Somebody will take it. Somebody it's either going to be it. somebody who's not qualified for the job Right, not but they'll, enough, yep. yeah, not experienced. They'll jump all over it, or it might be a qualified person who is just needs to get back out there. But you know what? Are they going to give you their best effort, knowing they're being underpaid when they come in? It, it, you know what I mean? And I think you know to that point, I think we need to really take a hard look at the at the recruitment process. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you want somebody to come in be the general manager, run your operation the way you want it, Fi- right. pay appropriately. But you know what? You will have to actually recruit and interview a lot of people and find Absolutely. the right person. But take the time now to do it. It's like when when I used to I used to play soccer when I was younger and my, my defenders, I, I played midfield or forward. And, okay. you know, we'd run down, you know, it goes out for a goal kick and uh, you have to run back on defense. And our defender would always say, do the work now. As opposed to waiting for the ball to come back in the game, and then you're, you're sprinting back to cover your man. You're, it's Absolutely. Like, do the work now. So do the work up front. Right. So that way you get a qualified person who is happy to be compensated. They're being compensated fairly, and they will give you a hundred. They're all. Right. As as opposed yeah. to us, keep keep trying to you know put a bandaid on it, 
and you know, hey, let's just get somebody in here really quick. Let's just get a, a GSA. I don't care if they have experience or not. We just need a body. But you know right. what? You have, I mean, if she's like that to me on a random weekday morning, how many mm-hmm. other people has she treated like that? Agreed. And this is right? agreed. I completely agree. And this is exactly why management in any kind of position right now, regardless if you're a franchisor that runs your space, you live in Arizona, you have a cafe here in California. Listen, you got to either have cameras in your space, you got to call in, you got to come, you got to put your video chat up there and just maneuver, or you got to make a sacrifice just being here every day for a a specific amount of time, Mm -hmm. you know, but you cannot expect people to run the show for you when they don't have any guidance of how you want them to run stuff. Or you just Mm -hmm. thinking, oh, they have a great resume. (laughs) Okay, it's said on their resume that they can execute this job. All right, well, everybody can, you know, come up with a fantastic resume. That don't mean that they really have the knowledge (laughs) and the, you know, the craft to really do that. So how do you really know, right? Especially with like investors or buyers in the hotel industry. A lot of them, a lot of them really don't, they're not from the world of hospitality. They don't even have anything to do. They just think, oh, I have a bunch of money. Let me invest it in a hotel. Okay, so, but how do you really know who to hire to really run your place efficiently and actually make money for you. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like also where a lot of people, or I want to just put the awareness out there to just be aware that if you don't personally have the knowledge and you want your business to be successful, get with other people that have the knowledge, you know, get with people like myself or other companies that can help you hire people, train people, ask the right questions, help you mm-hmm. with the whole transitioning of opening up a space, a restaurant or a hotel or whatever, so that you are at least starting successfully. I cannot promise you that you will be successful forever working with me, but I can promise you that I will do my very everything to set mm-hmm. you up right. Now, you are, it's up to you to maintain now. I'm not, you know, I'm not genie in a bottle. <laughs> you know, right. I'm going to come in, I'm going to set it all straight and I'm going to put in the right structures and find help you find the right people. But then again, it's up to you if this is your your life dream to maintain and to check in and wanting right. to do, you know, what it's really required. Because listen, right. hospitality is a very, very, very challenging industry, you know, and it's not for everybody. It's really not for everybody, you know, like, I mean, I remember when I was running a specific restaurant in Hollywood, I would um, always tell my team at the beginning, you know, I know everybody's an actor, everybody is a, you know, a model, but let's just act that we're all our waiters today. Right. (laughs) This is your role for tonight. (laughs) Right. Because they think, you know, people think they come in and I'm I'm gonna make a quick buck and this and and yes, Mm -hmm. you can. Absolutely. You can make Mm -hmm. ton of money ton i i personally seen cocktail waitresses in one shift five hours walk with almost 900 dollars in their pocket mm-hmm. goodbye see you tomorrow mm-hmm. yeah. and but it's you're possible. doing the job right it's right? absolutely you're... possible of course but, uh, but you like you said you gotta do the job right And you want to have to be there and you want to have to have this internal, not this, let me put on a nice smile. Let me act. No, people will Mm -hmm. feel that people feel if it's really genuine or if it's not, and you can have a beautiful smile. (laughs) People will get your energy. Of course. Of course. It's very easy. You you, you can't, you can't fake that. You can't fake authentic with people. You you know, I mean, you, you know, right off, Right off the bat, if the, if this person is 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 with it or not, I mean, I went mm-hmm. to a restaurant since I've been out here in California, and this guy approached the table, and he's like, he never really looked at us. He was just looking at the iPad the whole time. It wasn't like a engaging, an engaging, warm mm. greeting. And I was like, mm-hmm. he's he's not he's not here right now. He's not checked in, you, right. you know, and that will affect your tip. I'm just going to be real. You know, I, I, Absolutely. You know <laughs> I'm, I'm one of the people, I'm not going to give you any fluff, right? If, if you've got people like that, they won't get tipped, right? Yeah. Or they're not going to get tipped well, right? Yeah. Not as well as somebody who, who comes in and is like, hey, you know what? This is my favorite thing on the menu. Where are you guys from? Et cetera. Right. It's, it's, it's a little thing. I, I always told this story in, in my hotels. Um, and it's, it was tough once you get to the, the revenue management, uh, you know, director of revenue management, because people, people typically, A, don't know what we do. 
<laughs> number yeah. one. And then it's like, well, you're the revenue guy. What do you know about service? Right. All but, right. You know, I'm a hotelier. I consider myself a hotelier. I've been involved in this industry for half my life. I've been interested in it since the same age as you were. You know, right. my parents and I, you know, I would travel with my parents and we stayed at different resorts. And I remember we were at a resort in St. Martin. And um, I was at old enough to where I had to babysit my brother, right? So, you know, my, my parents would go off to the casino, like, okay, watch your brother. We'll be back in a couple hours. I'm like, okay, well, what do we do? And I remember telling my parents, there's nothing to do here. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about and what my dad said to me, well, if this was your place, what would you do differently? And mm-hmm. from that age, I started thinking about what, how you would build a resort that would keep a family happy, right? Wow. From the kid's perspective too. So I was about wow. that age. So when I, when I say these things, it's not like, it's not, it's not the numbers guy just spouting Speaking. some, some right. yeah, spouting some stuff. It's, it's, I'm, I'm invested in this. And I went to Paris a few years ago. I'll be honest. I'm one of the in the small percentage of people who don't. I don't. I didn't like it. Paris is just okay. not my vibe. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I know people love it. I, it's very pretty. I will say it's yeah. probably the most picturesque city I've ever been to. Every, right. Everybody could look like a professional photographer in Paris, but it's not a very warm, embracing <laughs> city. <laughs> not to me. At least mm-hmm. my experience wasn't. But mm-hmm. I'll tell you, that some of the, the, the most eye-opening service I got was there. It was at the Renaissance Trocadero Square. Um, we got there on a Friday evening. We had a tour booked um, to where we had maybe a couple hours from the time we checked in to go for this tour, right? We were able to make a reservation on their website for dinner okay. before the kitchen actually opened. So we showed up to the restaurant. They weren't open. And we were like, well, we made this on your website. So then they realized that there was some kind of error. As opposed to, you know, some alternatives, they said, you know what, hold on for a second. Why don't you go join the platinum reception in the concierge lounge? We got free Mm -hmm. drinks. They opened the restaurant early. They went and asked the kitchen if they could handle at the table of three. They said, sure. They opened up early and they served us. Mm, Wow. Right. Totally taking responsibility for their glinch on the website. Exactly. Now, a lot of places, most places you go to would have probably said, oh, sorry, we're not we're open. Sorry. And then right. we'll have to find someplace else to eat at the last minute. And now we're stressed out because we've got a tour, this tour coming because they were picking us up at the hotel. Then this, this, this car comes and it was one of the, the coolest tours I've ever done. It was like a little, those little punch buggy cars with n- no top. So you drive out around, around Paris at night and you see everything lit up and you take pictures. It was amazing. But it's this little car and I'm trying to take a selfie of all of us in the car, right? <laughs> and it was, I was struggling. And okay. the bellman saw it. He runs. He literally ran from his post at the front, at the front of, of the hotel, grabs my phone, takes a picture of all of us and goes back. No expectation wow. of a tip or anything like that. But he's like, hey, you know what? This guy's trying to capture this memory. Let me help him out. And I have, I've never forgotten it. And if I ever go back to Paris, that's where I would want to stay because these people get it. That doesn't cost, mm-hmm. n- nothing they did cost money, except yeah. maybe a couple free drinks at the concierge lounge. But yeah. okay, you didn't have to comp a night. You, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing, nothing major. It's just mm-hmm. a simple, genuine hospitality. And I don't know where we forgot that. Mm-hmm. It's a mindset. It's absolutely yeah. a mindset of how you want your business to run. You know, like, and this is what uh, I mentioned at the beginning, going the extra mile. You know, because I remember when I um, was in school um, for hospitality, hotel management, Mm -hmm. one of my mentors back then always told me, you never, ever say no, ever. Right. You will find a way, whatever it is that they're asking you, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it might be. Now, I, I could already hear, I could already hear the audience saying, well, what if it's somebody they, they want the presidential suite but it's not available okay well i'm talking about i'm talking about realistic mm. things that go from a mission statement that every company should have of what mm. they're representing and when i say with extra mile i'm talking about examples like what you just gave that was a perfect example the mm-hmm. bellman having nothing to do with you guys or your anything that was happening and yet he took it up himself 
to go and give you your picture because he simply saw that it was quite difficult to capture this moment you wanted to capture. Mm-hmm. That's going the extra mile. Or the restaurant that opened up their doors only for the three of you and not to be disrespectful, but really who were you three at that moment? Right. You were nobody. Right. I'm and not, yet still, you know, right. I'm not and, still, Cuba and my family, you know, you expect like celebrities get that, that kind of treatment, right? Which is real is, people. And this is exactly what this is all about. Everybody Absolutely. should feel like a celebrity when they go on vacation, when they enter a hotel, when they enter a restaurant, because number one, our guests can pick and choose where they go. Again, yeah. today more than ever. And if Absolutely. they choose to come to your place, please acknowledge them. Please be friendly on purpose. <laughs> please try to go the extra mile because Listen, everybody is there for a purpose. We don't know what behind everybody's scene is happening. If somebody comes into a restaurant and they just need to zone down, they don't need a waiter chit-chatting all night to them in their ear. If you already can tell from their body language, back off, do what you're supposed to do, and just leave them alone. You know, if you see a couple is getting into it something and you feel the why it's good to kind of like drop a (laughs) joke to make it a little lighter, Mm -hmm. great. Because they will remember, oh, honey, remember when you went on my nerves and then the waiter dropped that joke and right. oh, she was so funny. She was so cute. And then what do you, you associate that cute girl that mm. gave you fantastic service with an evening that started awful, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and this is really what, what hospitality to me is about. It's about being warm and welcoming and right. just wanting our guests to feel like, okay, I can drop my bags. I can drop my worries. I just want to have a fantastic cocktail at the pool. And I just want to enjoy myself. And everything is being catered to me. I don't want to deal with, I don't have enough towels. The shampoos are too tiny. Can I have more? Can I please have more water while I'm having my dinner? That's all stuff that our guests don't need to be bothered with. This is why we are here. We need to do that you know we need to see that we need to learn through communication Mm nonverbal. no Mm -hmm. no verbal communication should be actually needed right right it it reminds me of um back in in westchester new york where where i lived most of my life uh, before coming Mm -hmm. to california there's um a a restaurant chain called fortina and the the chef uh, the owner is a uh, Christian Petroni. Uh, he was award-winning chef. He's been on Martha Stewart and at Chopped and things like that, right? And we were lucky enough because our our hotel was was pretty close to uh, to his place. We got a tour, and on the tour, he said he doesn't hire. He hires he hires attitude. He's like, listen, it's it's a menu. Anybody can read it. I can teach you how to how to punch in, you know how to punch in the the right menu menu item. He's like, I, I don't need somebody that's got 15 years of experience in, in F and B to right. you know to, to be a waiter. I want somebody who is is friendly, engaging, and has the right attitude. Mm-hmm. Um and actually I'll uh this this is a, another great story that just this past weekend I was at the the premiere of uh Follow Me and I Will Be Behind You, which is the documentary by Kyle Allison at Hospitality MD. And it's That's about cool. Craig Poole, who um, who turned around the double tree in Reading, Pennsylvania, from one of the worst in in the in the country to number seven within a, a short period of time. Um, but they talked about when they were hiring people for the for the reopening of this hotel. There were lines of people. They, there's a, a stadium across the street, and people were literally lined up down the block to get in and apply for jobs. The owner, which is an um, older gentleman, he just Walked the, he just walked around outside and started talking to people. That's and right. the, the people that engaged with him and would be willing to have a conversation with a stranger, he pulled them out of line and hired them. And he said, I don't know what they can do, but they've got the right attitude to find a spot. What a fantastic strategy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and this is what I mean with, with the recruiters. It's like we we overthink it that people are so into do they tick every single box? Yeah, right? degree yeah. and this and that. Right. And Do they have the right experience? Have they worked at this type of a hotel? Have they worked in right. this market? It's like, do they get the business or not? You know, are, are they somebody that will represent you well? 
you can teach or my the, the worst one I hate is uh oh you know have they ever used this system before because systems are hard to learn <laughs> I mean yeah and, and and then if you if you would bring the question back to the person that asked the question did you learn it how? Right. By somebody teaching you, no? Somebody <laughs> teaching you and trial and error and just getting in there and doing it. We've all learned. I mean, if you've right. worked at two hotels, you've probably learned two different systems, right? Because yeah. you had to. Mm -hmm. I mean, give me a break. Does this person know this? <laughs> Somebody's going to have to learn something, you know, in getting a job, whether even if it's just as simple as I need to learn this particular hotel, this market, or, or right. how, it, how it behaves. I mean, speaking from a revenue standpoint, it will take you at least three months to figure out any hotel, okay, how much experience you have. Right, Every hotel has, has its own personality and the way it, it behaves, yeah. you know, that, and <laughs> that one always gets me. It's like, oh, does, do they know the system? Are you kidding me? It's a system. These are right. kids. Most of these people you're hiring, they, they've got 18,000 apps on their phone, all of which do different things and they don't know how to use that. You think they can't <laughs> learn the system? They can teach you the system next week. Give them a yeah. chance. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. but I, yeah, I think it, it's I think it's really about two really fundamental things. You know, it's a willingness, wanting to learn, wanting to have a teachable heart, and mm -hmm. b wanting to offer the knowledgement too. You know, right. because you know my dad always used to teach me. So this is one of the things. And both of my parents are not here anymore, but I always like to remember this: what my dad teach me, and she, he always told me. He said, "Look, the more the people that work for you know, the better it's going to be for you." Because mm -hmm. you know why? Everybody's going to do the same way you would do it. So don't hold back with your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Embrace the knowledge with the people that work for you. Because number one, they're going to feel that they are a part of you and your team and your dream and your vision and all of that. And number two, they're going to execute however you would execute it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so you know, well this, it, it, a, lot, a lot of people really are so, cause you know, I, at one point I tried to go into real estate and, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, it was sometimes difficult because a lot of people really didn't want to share what I needed to learn so badly. If, if this industry would be even something for me. And I met this amazing mentor that I worked for. She was amazing. And, uh, she was so gracious with her knowledge that through her, I learned so many things about the industry just by being her assistant. And she was not shy with sharing anything because mm -hmm. it gave me the opportunity as a newbie to decide right then and there, is this something that I think can be working for me or not? And had she not been so transparent and open and not afraid to share what she knows because I could have taken it and ran away with it or right. whatever, you know, I would have never figured out that actually what I'm doing right now, this is my calling, you know? So mm -hmm. just embrace, just embrace whatever, you know, share it with others and just work together. Two brains better than one, four eyes mm -hmm. better than two, right? Two hands, four hands better than two, you know? So why not? I, I yeah. mean, that's at least how I run my business with people that work with me, for me, along next to me that I'm working mm -hmm. with. Like, I truly believe in that. The more we all know how things work, the better we can execute. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it re reminds me of how I even got into revenue. I, I mean, my first my first boss out of uh, college, um, I, you know, I was a reservations manager, I reported right into the director of revenue. And mm -hmm. he's he was just... A stick in the mud, right? Didn't teach me anything. And, you know, the way I learned was by absorbing, you know, he, every now and then he'd get overwhelmed and he'd throw something at me. You know, there were, there, there were two properties he was responsible for. One was a lot mm -hmm. smaller and he just kind of, Hey, I just, just forecast that. I'm like, do you want to check it? Do you, oh no, just run with it. So <laughs> it was kind of like, just, I don't, I don't care. Just do it. Right. And mm -hmm. I could have, but I, you know, I took it as an opportunity to, uh, to learn, but you know, he was the guy, this guy was always stressed out, always. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I said, you know what? I don't, I don't think I want to do that job. I could, at that point in my life, I was, there's no way I'll, I'll do revenue management. This guy just doesn't, he just always looks stressed out. He just, no, I don't want to be that guy. Right. A couple jobs later ended up s same type of position reporting to director of revenue. But this, this lady was very, 
She was a teacher. She shared the knowledge. And then from learning with her, I realized this is interesting. Right. She kind of taught it as a strategy. And yeah. you know, I was like, okay, I can do this. I'm actually good at this. This is right. actually interesting and enjoyable. And it's it's just the, you know, the example of having two completely different approaches to a mm-hmm. situation. And it turns out, okay, it was just personality. Everybody has their own personality, right? Sure. But sure. this guy, he wasn't about imparting his knowledge. He wasn't about sharing. It was just about me, my job. I'm out of here at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just to kind of show the type of impact a person can have, how the right attitude towards being a mentor or even just a decent boss, right? right? Not everybody turns out to be a mentor, but just saying, hey, you know, this is this is how this is how it's done. This is what I did when I was in your position, or you know, whatever. Um, right. Just understanding. And it's, and, you know, and, it's, and I'm so sorry, but it also mm-hmm. creates somewhat of a relationship amongst each other, even if right. it's boss to regular staff. It does. And that's the whole purpose of right. wanting to be where you are working. Because we got to remember the people that work for us, they are building our dream. They're not building mm-hmm. their own. They're here with us right. all their time. They're more right. with us than what they are actually at home. So, yes, they do deserve to know everything what there is, ex- especially if it can help them to jump mm. forward and to be better and to be, you know, anything that can help you fundamentally, too. You know, right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're still friends to this day, me in that particular dorm, See? you know, Amazing. and we work together in a, in a couple other places and it doesn't always work out like that, you know, but um, when somebody takes the time to, to teach you, you know, on the flip side, being the employee, I appreciate that because not, not everybody would do it. And quite frankly, most people won't. Most people won't. are like you explained in the beginning is everybody's worried about their table, their section. And mm-hmm. most people are just come in to worry about their job and they're not worried about if you learn anything or not. So people that do take the time and reach reach out a hand to help you, appreciate those people. Hold on to those people as best you can because they're few and far between, unfortunately. Yeah, or vice versa. Even if you think you don't want to do this job forever and ever, still take the opportunity to learn because you never know what life might throw at you. And then yeah. that knowledge that you refuse to take, the teaching that you refuse to take, Mm-hmm. actually maybe help <laughs> man <laughs> you know? i yeah no you're 100 hey, right countless talk, you know countless times i mean i i had a vp who encouraged me to um basically just kind of take whatever th- th- and whatever kind of hotel they would throw at you take it she said mm-hmm. uh because she was promoted to vp a lot faster than her colleagues because she had a very diverse background, all different types oh, of hotels okay. and all different types of markets whereas mm-hmm. her counterparts only had city experience. So now when the company absorbs hotels that are in these middle or smaller markets, who are they going to look to? The person who has the experience doing these, you know? Right. And as much as it, it's great to have big city experience, yeah, but that's very, uh, there's a lot of hotel companies and a lot of hotel owners that don't own hotels in big cities. You know, mm-hmm. there's a big stretch of country between New York and LA that aren't <laughs> big metropolitan areas and they, they have right. hotels in them, you know? Mm-hmm. So you, you want to be open, o- open to, to learning everything. You never know when it's going to come in handy. You never know what experience you pull from. Like, yeah, I did that before. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You being know? open-minded is everything, you know, just really being open-minded and just letting anything enter that wants to enter and not mm-hmm. be afraid. Like fear is the biggest thing right now through this whole mm-hmm. COVID thing. If I think if anything, if we all learn something is that fear is, is not a good thing, you know, it's it's not right. from above. It's it's no need to, to have that. And, you know, just keep moving forward. Just keep believing and just 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 have faith, you know, just keep going. It'd be mm-hmm. OK. You know, yeah. it was OK till here. Somehow right. everything always works out. You know? Right. So- <laughs> right. Well, you, you know what? I, I will. I'll slightly disagree with that. I don't think it was okay until here. I think our I think our industry has been on a downslide for a long time. I think service has gotten progressively worse and worse in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. I think I think the focus has been too much on ROI as opposed to guest experience. 
And again, sounds weird coming from a guy who did revenue management for you know most of my career. But I understand that if the service isn't there, they're not coming back. And they're not, they're not going to pay extra. I know that when the service is right, the ADR goes up because they're going to be willing to pay more for that room. Mm-hmm. You know, with that part, I totally agree. I meant, you know, with being OK, that people are getting out of their head of like, I got to hire this p- person or I got to mm-hmm. do this more, more of like letting fear go of in general, just to embrace whatever it is so we can just make things. Oh, better. no. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I totally get you. I totally get mm-hmm. what you're saying. You know, yeah, I, I hear I think, you. I think this is an opportunity. You know, the entire industry has been forced to to take stock at this point yeah. of where we are, and you know what, we didn't want to wipe this the slate clean, but it got wiped. Right. <laughs> so now, why don't we rebuild it properly? Get the right people in place. Get the right attitude in place. And that goes, like you said, from ownership all the way down to the GSA, housekeeping, whatever That's entry right. level position you want to think of. The The whole mindset needs to change. I think we mm-hmm. as the employers need to look at it from a perspective of let's focus on the right things. We're focused on hospitality, on guest experience. We are trying to create memories for these people that are booking rooms with us. So now okay. how do we get the right people to fill those roles and execute that vision? Like to what you said before, if you don't know what what your vision is should be, how can you hire the right person for that? Right. How can they then execute? What? Execute what? The I don't know vision? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's a, and yeah. then that's when you end the thing is people want to come in. They want to know what they're doing. They want to know what they are part of. And mm-hmm. you could have a good person who's ready and willing to do all those things, but you bring them in. There's barely any training. They don't have the right, you know, there's not enough staff. So they're, then they are, they're overworked. Then in two weeks, they're like, okay, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, I just come in. I, I get a check at the end of the week. I'm not mm-hmm. invested in and in, in doing mm-hmm. the right things. I'm not invested in hospitality. I'm not invested in how this mm-hmm. guest feels. I don't care. Just, mm-hmm. I do, and those, you know. attitudes really unfortunately lead your guests to really give you the online reviews. Californians are all about Yelp. You know, they're going to give you a bad Yelp. They're going to give you a bad food review. You're going to have really bad reputation online or people just going to talk bad about you. I mean, let's just forget the internet because I'm very old school when it comes to this. So mm-hmm. if you have an establishment where you have people like that and you're not on top of that, the attitude, the mindset to change, people can really break everything for you. They can really make it difficult for you because people that get, they don't feel that they're being welcomed or appreciated or acknowledged or whatever, or put mm-hmm. on hold or do not pay attention to, guess what? The, the negative response and guests that are having, they're not going to tell only one or two people. No, they're going to tell seven. <laughs> seven people now will not know the negativity that happened at your establishment only from one guest. Now imagine there's 10 guests that experience something negative. One experiences something negative at the pool, the other one at the reception, the third one at the door, you know, at the, I mean, the, the door got with the, the doorman mm. you know and so on and so on and then you have so many people negatively talking right right yep and that and that's that's how it snowballs and then guess what they they stop booking rooms they start coming back your guest score starts slipping and then you're wondering then we're still stuck here wondering what happened we're shrugging our right. shoulders how did we get here mm-hmm. we, we got here because we didn't do the right things in the beginning mm-hmm yeah, I yeah. agree. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up with this. Um, you may have answered this already during the show, but um, what was your aha moment? Like, when did you realize this industry was for you? Starting your business was the right thing to do. When did it click? When everything fell apart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you started, yeah. you started your, your business um, during the pandemic. You know, I um, no. So I started my bus- business officially uh, at the uh, at the beginning of 2017. Okay. And I was pregnant at the time with my son, 
And so then, you know, um, I went through a whole lot of stuff there. And, you know, the idea for this business I had a long time and the execution, what I now do on my mm -hmm. own for people I've done for all of the people that I worked for. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've always done what I'm doing today. The difference is I'm doing it for myself now. And, um, okay. you know, but then shortly after that, I uh, had a very difficult time adjusting to being a new mom. And then very shortly after that, my mom passed away. Mm. So I've had a very, very, very difficult last couple of years, two, two and a half, three years were very difficult for me because I obviously had to get myself emotionally back together. I had a lot of conversations and fights with God. I, mm. you know, I, I at times really did not know what and who and where. And I was literally in a not good position at all. And so that's when I really, you know, started to really hone in with on my own self and really remember how that feeling was when I used to work at Burger King or when I used to right. work at hotels or when I used to have this amazing team environment at Cafe La Europe, for instance, where we were just and nobody cared. Year or if you anything, everybody was just family. Everybody helped everybody out. Everybody made money for everybody. You know, like the mm -hmm. busboy would go by my section. Oh, you would like another bottle of wine? No problem. I will tell my, I will tell your waitress. And he would, you know, and there's no, it was just beautiful right. how people really worked with each other for each other. And by reminiscing and by praying and by just going back in those old memories, I, something enlightened in me. And I was like, you know, I can do this. I'm meant to do this. This is my life. Like hospitality mm -hmm. is my first love. <laughs> you know, right. I got to do this. And that's how everything started. Really, I honed in, I wrote a business plan a 100 times, and I rewrote it again, and I threw it away. And I made business cards, threw them away too. created a website, deleted mm -hmm. the website, did a new one. And oh, my God. And so here we are with my fifth website, <laughs> with uh, the fifth time new business cards with a complete brand new concept. I'm right. so extremely proud from what, what it is right now going through the struggles that I had to go through to actually come here and I really truly believe that I had to go through everything for me to be here mentally settled and strong and connected mm -hmm. and just being cool with me in me with me. And right, right. yeah, I think that's kind of like, sorry, it was a long, long answer, but um, that we, we, that's no problem. <laughs> no problem. But you know what? That's, it's an honest answer. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what we're looking for yeah. here on, on this show. We're looking for, you know, you can get a lot of fluff out there in the yeah. in the podcast space and in in the hospitality space, the LinkedIn space, and you know we're here to give you give you the the real deal. You know, this is we're not going to pull any punches on this show, and I think that was a, a great answer. You know, it's not it's not always going to be pretty. Nope. It's not um, you know those of you out there who may look at people like the two of us or other people that you you follow on LinkedIn and run their own businesses and think that they've always got it all together. And this thing was just, you know, yeah. It's, Let me just yeah. do this. You yeah. Know? Oh, let's just, let's just start a business today. Sure. And <laughs> right. you know, I'll, I'll buy the Mercedes next week. You know, sure. yeah. yeah. Now we're, we're traveling the world and people give me free hotel rooms. It, it, no, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it, there's a lot of grinding that, that, that goes on. And, oh, um, yeah. you know, as I like to say, you, you're going to have to eat some shit just like you did in your career. Hey, you with know? buckets buckets not only food <laughs> but some buckets right mm -hmm. you know so no i i appreciate that that answer and i i hope uh i'm sure it will resonate with the audience yeah all right so we're gonna wrap up that was a great conversation thank you so much yes. for for joining me here today uh i think we had a great talk uh, we just so the audience knows i asked one pre-scripted question the rest of that was just two people talking about oh, industry they're passionate that. about <laughs> so. Yeah, that's yeah. And, and, you know, I really appreciate you inviting me. And it, it was an absolute honor to to share and just have a talk with you. And thank you so much for just, you know, having me on 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 your on your show and just uh, thinking that I'm interesting to you and my business and mm -hmm. clicking, you know, just being honest, like you said, I, I really appreciated that today. It was, yeah. it was fantastic. Absolutely. You know, this is what it's all about. And this is what we've been talking about. I think it's just genuine you know, interest in another person's story. So, um, That's it. yeah, Gio, uh, let, let the people know where they, where they can find you. So you can find me on my own website, 
Uh, it's janadivinehospitality.com. It's Z-A-N-A divinehospitality.com. You can find me with Jana Divine Hospitality also on um, Instagram. Uh, my name is Jana Asher. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can give me a call, a text, an email if you need any help or if you're looking for anything that you found maybe interesting in this conversation, give me a call. I'm always open for uh, a consultation. And if not, make go, make it work, you know, go back to your original dream and your vision and just don't stop. Just mm -hmm. keep going. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So we're wrapping up uh, episode one here of the Grow Spot podcast. Uh, follow us on Instagram at the G Spot and um, we'll see you on the next show. Okay. Bye.